Have you ever wondered what other IT professionals install on their computer from the very first time they boot it up? Well, I asked this question out on LinkedIn because I was curious. You see, I'm a creature of habit, so I typically will install the same programs and I have really installed many of the same programs for many years now. And it's always the same. Sometimes there's gonna be some slight variants or there's gonna be new things that I find, but otherwise, I've been pretty consistent in the things that I do when I first boot up a computer for the very first time. And the reason why this got brought up is because I had to recently reinstall programs on my Mac because it had a fresh install on there and it's like, well, here's the typical things I install on a Windows computer, here's the typical things that I install on my Mac, and then here's a couple things that I typically will install on a Linux machine. So I was like, hmm, wonder what other IT pros do for their machines. So that's why I'm bringing it to you guys. I posted this out on LinkedIn. You guys can see this on your screen now. Here's what we put, and here's the list of things that I typically install first, but I have to mention this. I've talked about this website before, and others have mentioned it in this post on LinkedIn as well. It's a website called Ninite.com, N-I-N-I-T-E.com, and this is the very first website that I go to, and I unfortunately have to use the Edge browser, or Safari, if you will, to get to this site. But the very first things that I do here, as I'm going through this list, as I'm selecting Chrome, I'm selecting Firefox, I'm, ex I'm selecting 7-Zip. Nowadays, we could be doing Zoom, Discord. No Skype for me, thank you very much. We got Steam, because I get on Steam occasionally. VLC, because that's my preferred video player. Got Audacity, because that's something that I use. And then, of course, we can go through the runtimes. We get all of these just in case we need them. Utilities, there's not much there that I use, but as far as imaging goes, we wanna make sure we have green shot selected because that is my favorite for sure. And then Dropbox is another one that we have uh, that I personally like. And then of course, Python, FileZill is a good one, Notepad++. And then all I could do is click on Get Your Ninite and what's gonna happen is it's gonna download an executable that runs through the installation for every single application that I just selected. So that is huge in its own right right there. It saves so much time and trouble going to each one of these websites to download these applications. If you haven't used this before, I highly suggest you guys go check out Ninite. They're not sponsoring this video. This is just something that I use personally and I enjoy, I love, and other people enjoy and love it as well. So. Going back to this, you guys saw, those are some of the things that I make sure that I install. They're all on that list. Core FTP is another one that I like to install. It's something that I've used since like, I don't know, like over 15 years probably at this point. That's what I personally like for my Mac, Microsoft desktop for my Mac so that I can remote to my Windows machines. I know, kind of funny, right? But. But for my Mac, I'm typically installing VLC, I'm installing Python, I'm installing the Microsoft Office suite, we're installing, uh, I think I said GreenShot, GreenShot for sure, definitely Chrome and Firefox. And then on Linux, we're installing stuff like Chrome, we're installing VirtualBox. There's not really too much that I'm installing because much of what I've been utilizing Linux for is stuff that really doesn't require too much additional installation. So there are many other people who have posted on LinkedIn here who have shared their recommendations for what they utilize or install on Linux. So make sure you check that out. But let's go through this list so you can see what other IT pros are installing on their computers. Now I wanted to point this one out specifically because my man Duan Lightfoot posted it, but updates, updates of course. If you guys aren't installing updates first, then I don't know what you're doing. Typically, my process is going to Ninite, selecting everything to download, and while that download or installation process is happening, I will go to the update section, whether it's Windows or Mac or Linux or whatever, and we're running those updates. So please make sure you're installing updates because it's very, very important. Here's Brian who says, Ninite installs a majority at once. Of course, we just covered that. They love Ninite. I love Ninite. You should love Ninite too, but you do what you want. Here's Harry, who's going all the way back to Windows 7. Update, service back one, updates, updates. Yeah, you're gonna be doing a lot of updates with Windows 7, for sure. But he's got Firefox, Antivirus, Notepad++, Office, Guild Wars 2, MB. 
and the rest is installed as required, of course, because there's always going to be little bits and pieces of things that you install after the fact. But typically, what we're looking for here is what you install the first time you boot up that computer. And here's Kayla, who looks like they are developer because they're installing Visual Studio, Postman, Python, Cyberduck, Node, Postgres. So that typically, to me, leans towards a developer side of things. So that's what they're installing. Of course, you guys are going to be able to access this link in the description below so you can read all of these comments. And here's our man, Kevin Diaz. If you don't know who Kevin Diaz is, now you're gonna know. He's Kev Runs on Duncan, who's always in our chats and always on our Discord server helping people out. So shout out to Kevin, really do appreciate him. He, for Linux, installs Vim, Reminov, which is a remote desktop, Tmux, OpenSSH, Valgrind, assorted programming libraries, Boost, Q Qt5, uh, Flame Shop pro for productivity, he's installing Pandoc, Text Live, our Markdown, LibreOffice, uh, Zathura, uh, which is a PDF reader for entertainment. He's talking uh, WeChat, MPD, and NCMPCPP for music, and MP4, MPV for video, sorry. And for virtualization, Chemu and Libvirt and Docker. And then he has his own custom scripts and configs that he runs but he is definitely a good person to talk to for anything Linux related. He dives deep into that world all the time. So it's really good to see what people are doing on the Linux side of things outside of Windows. Here's Daniel Baker, Classics, Greenshot, Notepad++, RDC Man, Putty, Chrome, Firefox, VLC, Windows Admin Management Tools, and Foxit Reader. Let's bounce around a little bit. Here's Ken Alarondo, the essentials, he says. Linux Server, Git, Tmux, Vim, Linux Desktop, VS Code, and Chrome, and Windows, just Discord and League of Legends. So. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That's there. Uh, here's Buddy Romesburg, who's installing C Cleaner, Firefox, VLC, 7-Zip, uh, Putty, uh, Views, Qubit Torrent, GIMP, Wireshark, PS Tools, Virtual Clone Drive, Visio, Adobe Acro uh, Acrobat Pro, uh, Matt Maltego, Kali, and VMware. Here's Kyle, who's installing Chrome, Steam, Notepad, Plus Plus, Sevens at VLC Media Player, Open Office, VirtualBox, Daemon Tools, Lite. Here's Robert, who's on Windows, is installing Chrome, VS Code, Python, uh, Ubuntu WSL. Robert Seely, who actually just got their ITIL certification. Congratulations to you, Robert Seely. Uh, for Windows, Windows updates, good man. Firefox, Chrome, 7-Zip, Foxit Reader, Microsoft Office, VLC, Notepad++, HW Monitor, H, uh, CPU-Z, VirtualBox, VMware Workstation, Wireshark, Putty, Python 3, Sys Eternals, Malwarebytes, Unchecky, and Flux. So as you guys can see, I'm not gonna go through each and every one of these. There's over 50 comments on this thread right here, but it gives you a great idea to understand what other IT pros install on their computers so that you can see and look into what they're doing. And maybe some of these different applications and tools you've never heard of, and maybe they could be very helpful for you. Maybe you could be learning some different applications during some free time that you have. But this, I think, is very important. Understanding what your peers are doing on their computers is going to be really kind of eye-opening to you in many ways. And this was eye-opening to me in many ways, just seeing the amount of people who continuously install the same applications. And these are people from all across the world who continuously install the identical applications from one another, which means that these are applications that you should be looking into if you haven't installed them yourself. Now, the reason why we bring this up today in this video is just so that you guys can understand and learn new things. I hope this is very helpful for you guys and you guys can continue to thrive off of this. So please go to this LinkedIn thread, respond to any of these people who posted what they install and ask them questions if you have questions. These people have taken the time, which I greatly appreciate, to leave their comments and share with you what they are doing. So I know if you respond back to them and ask them questions about why they're installing this or what they're doing with this application or program, they're probably going to reply back to you. So please hit up that thread. If you guys have any other comments, questions, concerns, or if you guys want me to cover any of these applications that we talked about in more detail, please let me know in the comments below and we'll start producing some of those videos. Again, hope this video is helpful for you guys. As always, take it easy.